Hey guys, Derek Check is here with Team Futaba, and today I want to take you through some of the receiver offerings that Futaba currently has, and particularly the ones that are oriented towards helicopters. Uh, some of the receivers I'm going to cover include the R7008 S-Bus receiver, the R6203 S-Bus receiver, and the R6108 S-Bus receiver. These seem to be the most common ones that I see at events and various fun flies that I go to throughout the year. And I'm going to take you through each one of them and explain some of the different features that they offer, the differences between the telemetry models versus the fast models, and why you might choose one versus the other for your uh, particular helicopter application. So we're going to go through how to link each of these receivers to your model, and as well as some of the different features each of them offer. So I hope you enjoy the video. Okay, so I have here three of the receivers that I'm going to go through during this video. And uh, I just want to explain some of the differences between them and why you might pick one for an application versus the other. So we're going to start with the R7008 S-Bus receiver. Uh, this one came out about two years ago with the Futaba 18MZ. It's a uh, pretty versatile receiver actually. It's a fast test, so it is a telemetry receiver. Um, it has a full eight channels on the back, as well as an S-Bus port and an S-Bus 2 port. And it also has a plug on the front for the external voltage cable. So uh, you can do a lot with this receiver. Uh, if you were running a flybard helicopter and you wanted to monitor, say, your main pack voltage, or you wanted to monitor your nitro engine temperature, or you wanted to hook up the Futaba GPS sensor, uh, this would probably be a good receiver to use because you have the full eight channels. So running a flyboard helicopter, you would have all the ports you need to plug in all your servos. Uh, the S Bus 2 port on the back here would allow you to plug in any of the Futaba sensors available, uh, the GPS sensor, the temperature sensor, etc. And you would also have the plug on the front here available for the Futaba external voltage wire. Uh, and that is what will let you monitor the uh, main pack voltage for those of you running some of the higher power electric helicopters or whatnot you can uh, buy a cable that will plug in here and you would then solder the two leads to the positive and negative leads coming out of your ESC and the receiver would be able to monitor your main pack voltage and send it to your radio and you can then set up some alerts and stuff so if your pack voltage uh, dips below a certain level your radio will vibrate or beep or so on and so forth um, so this is a pretty versatile receiver. Uh, of course, because it has the S-Bus port as well, it's also useful for a flybarless model because you can uh, use a single S-Bus lead from the receiver into any of the more common flybarless units out there, such as the Mikado V-Bar or the CGY 750 or the Align 3GX. Any of those will accept the uh, S-Bus lead, so you only have one wire coming from here to your flybarless unit. So pretty versatile. Uh, like I said, it comes with the 14SG and the 18MZ radio pr presently. Um, definitely a real handy receiver. Uh, the next one we're going to go through here is the R6108 S-Bus receiver. Uh, this is actually a previous generation receiver. Uh, Futaba now has the R6208 S-Bus receiver, which is actually the high voltage version of this one. Uh, otherwise, they're virtually identical. Uh, this one is also a good choice if you're running a flybard setup because you have the full eight channels on the back to plug in all your servos. Um, it also has an S-Bus port which is actually the horizontal port here on the back. Um, so if you're running a flybarless helicopter you can still use this receiver. You'll just have one lead coming in to the back here and going off to your flybarless unit. Um, it is not telemetry enabled. Uh, this is just a fast receiver. So this one will not accept any of the uh, telemetry sensors. But overall it's a good receiver, it's full range, you know, it's got the full, it's got both antennas and it uh, works pretty good. I use this on some of my other models right now that I have. Uh, last is one of my favorite receivers, the R6203 S-Bus receiver. And this thing's pretty cool just because it's so small. Uh, if we compare it to like the R7008 receiver, you can see it's much thinner uh, in terms of height. It's a little bit narrower than the uh, R7008 S-Bus receiver, and it's definitely a little, quite a bit shorter. 
So it's a real compact uh, receiver. You can see it's like almost the size of my thumb, and I don't really have big hands. So I mean, it's it's pretty compact. Uh, you can fit it on a 450 or a 250 or any of the smaller helicopters that are out there, and this won't take up a lot of room or add a lot of weight. Uh, this one would not be that great for a fly bar setup. Obviously, it only has three channels out of the back plus the S bus port, so you would not be able to plug this onto, say, a nitro helicopter necessarily, uh, unless you use something like the GY701 and run a fly bar setup with it. This is more oriented towards those of us running fly barless models um, because you can only have the one lead, or you can have the one lead going from the S bus port out to your fly barless unit, and that will leave you with actually three open channels here that you can do whatever you want with. So if you want to run a switch glow, or your night setup, or landing gear, or landing lights if you're doing scale, uh, this receiver would actually cover all of that uh, in a very compact small package. Uh, this one's actually quite a bit less expensive than some of the other receivers too. I believe it's around $65 retail. So it's actually uh, pretty inexpensive too for what you get. And with the trend going towards fly barless these days, uh, most people will probably actually opt for this receiver. Um, one more receiver I want to mention here that I do not have, unfortunately, is the R7003 S bus receiver. So that is the three channel version of this receiver. And uh, it's the same size as this guy, but it is fast test and it is telemetry enabled. So you get the same compact size that this one offers with the telemetry that this receiver offers. Uh, so that one is another popular one that I see these days. Um, unfortunately, I don't have one to go through right now, but um, what we go through on this should cover um, most of the features that the uh, the three-channel version will offer, aside from, obviously, the size. So, let's go on to our next section. Okay, guys, so in this segment, I'm going to show you how to link your Futaba radio to one of the fast receivers that Futaba offers. Uh, in this case, we're going to go through the R6203 S bus receiver and link that one to the radio. Uh, the 6108 S bus that I have video right here is uh, the process is identical to link it, so it's not any different. Um, so there's no point in going through both of them. So we're just going to do the 6203 S bus receiver here. So the first thing we're going to do is turn on the radio. And I'm going to go to my T-Rex 450. I'm going to go to the linkage menu. I'm going to scroll down to system. And I want to make sure I have fast multi selected here. And um, I also want to make sure that unless I live in France, I have G selected here. Um, this parameter basically sets the power output uh, for the uh, transmission from the radio. So G is a higher power transmission type versus the other setting which is F and that's done so that the Futaba radios comply with France's regulations for uh, their radios I guess over there. Uh, they have a lower power uh, allow, allowed in their radios over there versus everywhere else. So if you're not in France, leave it at G. So now that I've got both those selected and I can see that my radio is transmitting, I'm going to go ahead and power up the receiver here. And you can see I have a blinking green light. So that actually indicates that the receiver senses that there's uh, a radio transmitting nearby, but they're not linked together. And actually if I power off the radio, you will see the light turn to solid red, indicating that there's no signal. So I'm going to turn it back on and pick my 450 again and we're back to the blinking green so to link these two together what we're going to need to do is take our Futaba poker tool that comes with the 14 SG or some of the Futaba accessories out there and you'll see on the 6203 S bus receiver that there is a link slash mode um, label right here and next to it is a little button recessed into the receiver case and we're going to take the screwdriver tip and we're going to hold that button down for two seconds. So we get these flashing red LED and I'm going to let go. And you can see after a few seconds there the LED went to solid green. So this receiver is now linked to the radio right here. And actually 
if I plug in uh, one of the servos I happen to have lying around over here into the radio, or we'll plug it into channel 2, you can see that it's working. So that's all it takes to link uh, the fast receiver to your 14SG. So we'll go on to our next segment. Okay guys, so the next thing I'm going to show you here is how to link your R7008 S-Bus receiver with your Futaba 14SG. Uh, if you just got your Futaba 14SG, uh, this is probably going to be one of the first things you do once you charge up your radio. So we're going to go through how to link it and uh, get everything working the way you need it to. So to start, we're going to power up our radio. I'm going to pick my 700E because that's what I stole this receiver from. And I'm going to go to my linkage menu. I'm going to go down to System. I can get to it here. And basically in the system menu here is where I pick my transmission type. So you can see right now I actually have fastest 14 channel mode selected here. Um, so for this receiver we need to pick either fastest 14 channel or fastest 12 channel mode. Um, basically if you're going to run any of the Futaba telemetry sensors such as the GPS unit or the temperature sensor or the atmospheric sensor or any of those other ones uh, those all get plugged into the SBUS2 port on this receiver and uh, those sensors generate uh, quite a bit of data and as a result of this Futaba has a different transmission code that they use um, in order to for the receiver and radio to communicate with one another and this results in a slightly slower um, response time between the radio and the receiver I don't know the number off the top of my head. It's a little bit slower than the fastest 12 channel mode or the fast mode. So uh, you only really want to pick this if you're going to use one of the sensors that plug into the S Bus 2 port here. Otherwise, there's really no benefit to running the 14 channel mode. Um, now, if you're running the external voltage cable, which plugs into the front here, or you just want to monitor your receiver pack voltage, you're going to want to pick the 12 channel fastest mode. So the 12 channel mode will monitor the your main pack voltage, so whatever you have wired into the sensor that plugs into here, and it will monitor your receiver pack voltage. However, none of the SBUS2 uh, sensors will work in 12 channel mode. So depending on what you want to do, uh, just select the appropriate mode. Again, if you're not running one of the sensors, I would just stick with the 12 channel mode as you'll get a little bit faster uh, response time. So that's what I'm going to link to right here. So to do that, we're going to go to 12-channel mode. Uh, I don't want to channel relocate. And now that that's selected, we're going to go down to where it says link. So to link, it happens pretty quickly here, so I'm going to actually do it twice for you guys, just so you can see. But what we do is I'm going to hit return, uh, once the link is highlighted here and the receiver the radio is going to start making a, a chime indicating that it's trying and searching for a receiver and at that same time I'm going to plug the power lead for my battery here into the receiver and we're going to watch the LED on the front go from red to green so I'm going to go ahead and do that right now so you can hear the chime and I'm going to plug in my lead and you can see it went from red to a solid green and the chime stopped. So now my receiver is linked to my radio. That's all I need to do. I'm done. I can power off this, power off this, and you'll see now, I mean, even if I plug this in first, it'll show red until I boot it up. Just hit my CRX 700 e and I'm back to solid green again. So that's all you have to do to link the fastest receiver to the radio. Uh, the process is identical for the R7003 S-Bus receiver that Futaba offers as well. So you can follow these same steps for that. But that's all there is to it, really. Um, it's pretty straightforward. And once you link your receiver, uh, I've never, ever, ever relinked it or had to relink it after that. Uh, it's basically a one-time deal. So the only time you'd relink is if you bought a new radio and you wanted to link to that one. So... That is linking the R7008 S-Bus receiver to your radio, as well as uh, the difference between the 12-channel and 14-channel fastest modes. Okay. 
Now I want to tell you guys about the different modes the R7008S bus receiver has. So there's actually four different modes, uh, mode A, mode B, mode C, and mode D. Uh, basically these modes affect how the channels map to the different ports on the back of the receiver. So by default the receiver is in mode B. And mode B basically is channel 1 maps to port 1, channel 2 maps to port 2, and so on and so forth all the way to channel 7, but then channel 8 is actually your SBUS output. So uh, your fly wireless unit that you were connecting with SBUS would plug into the channel, or excuse me, the port 8 slot on the back of the receiver. Now the receiver also has mode A. Uh, mode A is identical to mode B, except the SBUS slot is now just channel 8, so you have no SBUS output. Uh, mode C uh, is pretty much for the 18MZ, since the 14SG is limited to 14 channels. But basically it would convert the ports back here so that uh, port 1 would correspond to channel 9, port 2 would correspond to channel 10, and so on and so forth, all the way down to channel 16. Um, and then finally mode D is identical to mode C except channel 8 instead of being, or excuse me, port 8 instead of being mapped to channel 16 is mapped to S bus. So those are the four different modes and how the ports on the back map to the different channels in them. Uh, for helicopters really you're going to be using mode B uh, unless you're doing something with scale and you need your channels rearranged. I can't really see anyone using uh, the mode C or D for helicopters really. Uh, I think mode B is going to work the best. But just to show you how to switch between the different modes, you're going to need your Futaba poker tool, which I have right here. And you'll notice on the front that there's a little button right here in this recessed slot. So to change the modes, we need to go ahead and push on that button and then simultaneously power up the receiver. So I just need to make sure I get the screwdriver in the slot here. Oops. And once I've got that held down, I'm going to go ahead and plug power into the receiver. Oh, and you can see now uh, I'm getting a one blink. So this is telling me that the receiver is in mode A right now. Now if I want to change it to mode B, I'm going to go ahead and click that button one time and now you can see I'm getting two red flashes so that indicates I'm in mode B now I can hit it again and you'll notice now I'm in mode C with three red flashes and once more I'll now get four red flashes indicating mode D um, so that's how you change the different modes I'm just going to go ahead and switch mine back to uh, mode B because that's what I use so two red flashes and I'm done so that's all you have to do to switch different modes on the R7008 SBUS receiver.